everybody. Welcome to a special week of Technique Tuesday. I am Anastasia Radloff, AKA Stampin' Blondie, and I'm here and I'm happy that you are joining me for my live step-by-step -step crafting event for the week. Now, let me just make sure that I am live here on Facebook and that I can follow along with your comments. If you're watching, make sure comment to say hi. Let me know that you're joining me and watching this week. There we go, looks like I've got everything ready to go to follow along with your comments. I hope you all had an amazing holiday weekend if you're joining me here from the United States and a great Independence Day. If you're joining me, make sure to comment, say hi, let me know where you're watching from. It's fun to see each week where everybody is joining me. If you are joining via replay here on Facebook or YouTube, make sure to comment replay and let me know that you were able to join me this week. I have a fun, really fun kind of fancy fold project for us today. Um, I'm only gonna be creating one project. Normally I come to you live each week featuring two projects, but because this one is a little more intense, I wanted to do one project and really focus in on this technique. Hi Becky, hi Rhonda. I am doing really well, so I'm recovering from pretty extensive foot surgery that I had almost two weeks ago. I had my first follow-up appointment last week on Friday and uh, got to see what it looked like. I will spare you all the uh, details about that, but I have a lot more stitches than I thought I was going to. Uh, apparently 13 is my lucky number for stitches this time around. Uh, but hopefully this is my last surgery. I get those out on Friday and I'll be scooting around for the next couple weeks on my knee scooter and then I'll actually be able to walk around little by little as time goes on. Uh, sorry for being a little late getting my Technique Tuesday uh, details out via my blog and email today. It takes me just a little bit longer to get around, so uh, I, there's not much room in the craft room to wheel around either. So uh, thanks for being patient as I got that out a little later than normal today. All right, so today we are going to create something called a pinwheel card and it's really popular right now but once you see how easy it is to create you're going to want to create one of these yourself too now if you are brand new watching my stamp and blondie videos welcome each week i come to you live normally on monday for what i like to call makers monday but because sunday was the holiday and then monday was a federal holiday yesterday I was spending some much needed time with my husband while he had some time off of work. All right, so today we are doing something called Technique Tuesday. It's what I do when I can't craft on Mondays with you. And it's something fun and different to show you how to use some products in a fun and unique way. Each week I bring something to you called Prize Patrol. And two weeks ago I featured some projects using the sweet ice cream stamp set. So let me go ahead and swap my camera here. Let me make sure I hit the right buttons. There we go. So two weeks ago, we featured some projects with the sweet ice cream stamp set. Now, what exactly is Prize Patrol? So all you have to do is share this video and comment that you shared. Sometimes Facebook doesn't always let me know when somebody shares my videos, but you can be entered to win our weekly prize patrol. That's how easy it is. Now, unfortunately, this is only open to my viewers in the United States. So unfortunately, if you are outside of the US, you cannot participate in prize patrol, but know that you are still um, highly welcome to share my videos as well. So two weeks ago, I created projects with the sweet ice cream stamp set. And our winner from two weeks ago was Diane Webb. I'm not sure if she's joining us here live, but I know she usually watches my videos. So congratulations, Diane. You are our winner for our prize patrol for the sweet ice cream stamp set from two weeks ago. Now this week's prize patrol is something from a, a little oldie, but a goodie. It is the Punch Party Celebration Host Set. Um, this is a really fun stamp set that coordinates with a bunch of our stamp or punches that we have in our lineup. 
So the Punch Party brand new stamp set will be the winner for this week's Prize Patrol. And this is a photo polymer stamp set, meaning it's completely see-through and clear so you can see exactly where you are stamping at. And then you can easily line that up with the coordinating punches to go along with this. And you know what? I will actually be seeing Diane on Saturday so I can deliver that to her in person. So congratulations, Diane. You are our Prize Patrol winner from two weeks ago. Also, uh, each week I um, create a online PDF that you can follow along with the projects that I'm going to create today. So on this free PDF, this is available on my website, stampinblondie.com. It has all of the products and dimensions of the items that I will be creating today. Now, because we're only using one, we're doing one project today, I just have one here listed, but I have some details of some other events that are coming up. Now on this free PDF, it lists all of the product names, item numbers, and prices of the products, as well as the dimensions down here to create our projects. So you can pair this free PDF with this video to work along with me and create your own pinwheel projects for the week. Now on here, you may notice that the You're a Peach Designer Series paper is highlighted. That is because select designer series papers through Stampin' Up! are on a discount this month, up to 15% off. So if you go to stampinup.com, you can shop all of our discounted designer series papers, and one of them is the You're a Peach designer series paper. Also, I have announced this past week my Sweet as a Peach July card class. So you may have seen that. If not, that's okay. I'll show you a little sneak peek of some projects that are coming. But we are going to be featuring the Sweet as a Peach stamp set and coordinating die bundle. Now, if you already have that, that's okay. You can still participate in our class. Or if you want to use a different stamp set for your sentiments, you can easily mix and match these out for the Sweet as a Peach. So what is included in the class kit? So there's a... Uh, four different options. The basic class kit comes with a roll of linen thread. You get a package of the adhesive back sequins. These come in four different colors and we're going to be using these on our projects today. And then a full package of the You're a Peach 12 by 12 designer series paper. Now this paper is what we're gonna be using on our project today. So you can see how you can easily swap out the projects from the You're a Peach July card class for items with the pinwheel card that we're creating today. So you can sign up for the class and you'll be able to make this pinwheel card as well. And I wanted to show you a sneak peek of two of the projects that we'll be creating. Now the class kit comes with supplies to create eight projects, two each of four different designs. This is a paired class with Lisa from Sweet Paper Studios, Lisa Hardy. Her um, and I pair up each month to create cross-border classes. She's a Canadian demonstrator and I am here in the United States. So you can register for this class with her in Canada and with me in the United States. Now here are two of the projects that we will be creating during the July card class. So you will create actually two each of these designs as well as two different more for a total of eight cards all together. So if you want details on how to register for this class, uh, the deadline to register will be July 12th. So only six days left to register for this. All the details will be posted in the description of this video once I am finished with our live here today. All right, so let's get the peach stuff out of the way. And then one last thing I wanted to, uh, to announce, uh, I haven't even put it on my blog yet, I haven't done anything yet, is my summer online creative retreat is coming August 28th. Now this is an online virtual retreat, so so excited to create with you via online. So no matter where you live in the United States, we can craft together. We will be featuring the Pansy Bundle and Coordinating Projects from the Pansy Suite. So this is a really fun uh, suite of products that we will be crafting together with. All the details on this will be posted this week. 
Um, so August 28th, save the date, 1 p.m. Pacific time, live, no matter where you live, we'll be able to create and craft together. I am really looking forward to creating this. We had my Sand and Sea virtual retreat back in March, and that was a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to the summer retreat here. All right, our project today, like I said, project, we're only creating one, is what is called a pinwheel card. You can see here, it stands up all by itself, very simple to create, and it has four different panels that we're going to be creating for this project. Now, the best part about this whole thing is that it fits into a regular sized envelope. Now, if you're gonna mail this, you may need additional postage just because of the bulk, but you can easily gift this to somebody and it fits right into a regular size envelope. No special size needed here. So we are gonna start first. Let me get all my supplies out here and I can kind of show you what we are gonna work with. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna craft this little this is called kind of like a tube right here in the middle. Super easy, but it's it's very it's a separate piece. So we're going to move that off to the right hand side. So to create this, we need a piece of designer series paper. I'm using all of the sweet as a peach designer series paper or sorry, you're a peach designer series paper today. And this is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. So equal on both sides. What we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in our Simply Scored board. Now, if you don't have one of these and you create a lot of 3D projects or even just scoring for a lot of cards, the scoreboard is perfect. I love this because I can easily score all my cards and I don't have to make sure on my trimmer I'm using the right score or the uh, cutting. I've actually cut some things when I needed to score. So I like to always use my scoreboard when I am doing 3D projects. So the first thing we're going to do, four and a quarter by four and a quarter, we're going to score at every inch. So one inch, two, three, and four. So you're going to have, and then we're going to put that away because that's all we need it for today. So you have this piece of paper here and you can see the four lines and you'll have this extra little tab and that's gonna help us um, glue everything together. So we are going to make sure that this flower side is gonna be on the outside of our, or sorry, inside of our project. So I'm gonna take my bone folder and we're just gonna crisp up all the lines here to create this tube and and then we have this little tab and that's what we're gonna use to glue it all together. Now for this, I'm gonna use a variety of adhesives. We're gonna use Tombow liquid glue, stamp and seal tape runner, and we're gonna use uh, stamp and dimensionals. If you prefer to use stamp and seal tape runner, you can, but for this itty bitty little piece here, I like to use Tombow liquid glue and that make sure that I can control the amount of adhesive and it has a little bit of a give to it as well. It um, Once you glue it together, you can kind of shimmy the paper around and make sure everything's lined up. Um, and then you can really give that a good fold there to create your little tube. So there is the inside so on mine, I did the inside of mine was the stripes and this one I'm gonna do, the inside is going to be the floral pieces. I hope you guys can see that inside there. All right, next I pre-cut four pieces of balmy blue cardstock. Now let me get my measurements out so I can tell you what these are. These are two and three fourths by four and a quarter. So two and three fourths, and then you get two pieces because it's an eight and a half by 11 sheet of cardstock. So very easy to cut these out. And what we're gonna do is we're going to place our adhesive. Again, I like to use Tombow liquid glue. And we're gonna take one by one and line that up to our fold on our tower. So there's our first one. 
and you're just gonna work your way around to glue every piece down. And line this one up. And you can see how simple this is. It looks like it's a really hard project when you glue everything or once it's all put together. But once you see the kind of the bones of the project, it's very simple to put together. I'm using the liquid glue so I can shimmy my paper around in case I need to. I'm just gonna line that up. And then our last one here. This last one, you kind of have to work a little backwards. So you wanna make sure you're gluing your paper on the correct way, so it's gonna go this way. So I want to glue mine going the right direction. One last check to make sure. And we're gonna butt this right up to our designer series paper. And now we have our pinwheel base. See how easy that is? Very simple, so easy to do. Looks like it is difficult, but super easy to put together. So now all you have to do is decorate it. And you can come in and just kind of work it with your bone folder again, just to make sure that it's all gonna be crisp when it stands up. So that is our pinwheel card. All right, so now we're gonna decorate this. So we're gonna start on one end. It doesn't matter which side you work with. They're all gonna be the same. So I'm gonna start, I wanna make sure that my designer series paper, the flowers on the inside are going the right direction. So I want them standing up, no upside down flowers. So we're gonna start with this panel right here. I have a piece of designer series paper that I've pre-cut and this is two and a half by three and three fourths. So we are going to, again, I like to use liquid glue for this portion just because if it's not lined up exactly where I want it, I can move it around for a few seconds. It has that give to be able to lay that down. Another piece of oops, designer series paper. Now this is one and a half by four inches. Uh, so basically, if you don't have my dimension sheet, that's fine. You can take these, grab your ruler, and just do a quarter inch smaller on two of the sides, and it'll lay flat right and have that good mat around the outside. So we've got one and a half by four here. And we're gonna place that right in the middle of that. Now with this, I left, I left a little space here where you could um, add another die cut. You could write a little something. You could remove this peach and make that your writing area. However you want to decorate this is really up to you. But I have my first panel here is put down and we're gonna work on our sentiment. Uh, like I said, we're gonna use the Sweet as a Peach stamp set, and we're gonna use Pale Papaya ink for this. That Pale Papaya is the perfect peachy tone for these sets. So we're going to stamp our sentiment that says, have a peachy day. And I think this is a perfect birthday card. It's actually um, one of the sentiments I have is birthday. So we're gonna do have a peachy day right in the middle. And I'm gonna use Stampin' Dimensionals to put this down onto the project. Just two dimensionals. Don't forget to use the edges of your dimensional pieces. That is still perfectly good. After you've used all the middle pieces, you can cut these edges and still have perfect dimensional pieces. So don't throw those away, just another little tip right there. And we're gonna place that in the upper left-hand corner. Now I'm not gonna do the embellishments just yet, that'll be the final touch. I'm gonna embellish them all at the same time, but we're gonna work and move on. Let me close this so I don't get ink everywhere. And we're gonna move on to our next panel here. Again, same thing, one and a half by four inches 
for this designer series paper. And you can see I used a lot of the same designs. So I just flipped them over so you'll know that they'll coordinate with each other. But all of our designer series paper in the Sweet as a Peach bundle and all of our other designer series papers, as long as you use the same package of paper, they all have the same colors running throughout them. Now I've pre-cut, these are from the Scalloped Contour dies. Now this is a great die set here. If you are a fan of our um, nesting dies that we used to have or stitch dies, this is a great stamp uh, die to have. We have a coordinating stamp set to go with this. It's called Color and Contour, but I am just using this die right here. This is a perfect die size to fit right in the middle of our card, but this has some really fun other dies and I'm actually going to use these on our pansy projects for the uh, summer online retreat as well. We're going to adhere this down first because we're going to stamp directly on it. Now you can stamp and then adhere everything together but it's just easier to place it down first and we're going to use balmy blue ink. Again stamp set we're gonna have the sweet as a peach now for my first project i used pool party and i realized after i put everything together that this is actually balmy blue in our designer series paper so i made our card for the sample here actually in balmy blue so you guys can see that it'll match with each other instead of my pool party that i accidentally used the wrong color it happens. All right, we're gonna stamp our peach now. Now I'm gonna use our coordinating dies that go along with this stamp set to create this really fun two colored peach. And these are um, a really easy stamping technique for there too. So I have a piece, just a scratch piece of basic white cardstock and our peach stamp, get that out. We're going to stamp it first in pale papaya. So we're going to ink that up. And then we're going to come in with our Calypso Coral ink. And we're going to do, it's called kiss technique. So you're just going to take the right side of the peach and kind of just kiss it on the stamp set. You don't, oops, I totally just put that into an open ink pad. All right. Use my ink stamp and scrub to get that off <laughs> but I just kissed the calypso coral onto my um, pale papaya and you're just gonna stamp it right onto there now these stamps are meant to not be fully stamped up so you can see here that it's missing a little bit of ink there that is on purpose this stamp set is more of like a watercolor wash stamp set so don't worry if it's not completely filled in with color. It is supposed to be like that. The first time I did it, I was like, oh no, I missed a spot and I tried to restamp it, but it's meant to look like it has that missing part. All right, now we're gonna come in with the stem and we're gonna stamp this in uh, pear pizzazz, which is the green color throughout our designer series paper. So this is all going to line up and match with each other. So we're gonna close up our ink so I don't get that everywhere else. And our peach dies. Now these peach dies uh, fit obviously with our die set, but the one thing that I highly recommend if you have these and you're running them through the machine is to take a little piece of washi tape so you want to washi tape the die down and it'll hold it in place so that when you run it through your stamp and cut and emboss machine, it's not going to move and shimmy around. Some of these are uh, intricate dies, so you wanna make sure that everything lines up when you cut. So I'm just taking a piece of washi tape to hold down my die in place. Okay, let's get our stamp and cut and emboss machine out. We're gonna use the, the big one today. I had it on my table over here and I didn't really feel like hobbling across my craft room to get the mini one out. So we've got our, oh, dropping plates. Got 
our base and our plate number two, our clear plate and our peach and stem. That's the best part about these. There are two separate stamps, two separate dies, so you can run them through at the exact same time. And you'll have this here. Ugh. There you go. I love Pool Party. I used it in my clay. See, our, our inks can be used in a variety of mediums more than just stamping. So you can use our re-inkers for watercoloring, uh, changing the color of our embossing paste in clay. I didn't know I could use them in clay. That's fun. But yes, Kay, you will have to try one of these and you should post it so we can see what it looks like. I'm really excited to see. I know Cindy's watching and she usually makes my uh, Makers Monday slash Technique Tuesday project. So I'm excited to see what she comes up with this week for our project as well. All right, our card. We're gonna use dimensionals on the back of our peach here. So two and we're gonna lay that down kind of at an angle onto our card and then the back of our stem just one dimensional for the back there and we're going to tuck this kind of behind the peach so the stem just kind of peeks out there all right so that's our third our second panel here and then we're going to work on this one now Cindy, I'm creating, yes, I'm excited to see what you make today. Uh, I'm, I don't know what combination you're gonna work with, but I know it's gonna be great. All right, we've got our peaches here, one and a half by four inches long. Our designer series paper. See, this is the same thing as the inside. So we are using almost all of the same pieces and just the opposite side of each one so that you don't have to cut a whole bunch of different pieces out. You can use the same pattern for different sides. I've got, now this is cut from the Tasteful Labels dies. Now this is another great die set. This comes with, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 different dies. And it has a great variety of sizes. This was the first die that we used on the first panel here. And then this big piece is what um, I'm using now. But this is a great die set for, just to have on hand for basic labels. I really like this one. All right, we are gonna create this little fun flower look here. Now this actually uses the big stem piece. This is one big stamp. So you're gonna need to get out your clear block E for this. And we're gonna ink this up via pear pizzazz. And then we're gonna come in with the flowers and do that in Calypso Coral. So our pear pizzazz here. Now this can be a little bit of a tricky stamp to line up. The thing that I can suggest is don't try to get it lined up perfectly. Just stamp it on there and then line up the peaches or the flowers, they're both interchangeable, as well as you can. So they don't have to exactly line up. You can see my flower here overlaps a little bit. And on this one, I actually stamped it completely upside down. So my peaches don't line up but my flowers don't line up either. So it is okay if it doesn't line up perfectly. And we're gonna come in with our Calypso Coral. Ink up our flowers. Now these, let's see, you just kind of have to play with them to get them to figure out which one goes where. So I'm gonna twist this around and See, I had these two at the bottom for my first project. So I'm just gonna stamp it like that. And then at the bottom, To A Sweet Friend is in balmy blue as well. Yeah, I stamped it upside down, but you know what? It works. Even if it is upside down, it's okay. I just went with the flow and left it upside down and it worked out. It was perfectly fine being upside down. And you know, I didn't even realize it was upside down until the whole project was done. <laughs> All right, so let's see, to a sweet friend, let me find it here. 
and that's going to be in balmy blue this little itty bitty sentiment here at the bottom right in the middle for that and then that is again going to be adhered with stampin dimensionals got a whole thing of dimensionals here ready to go as my backup because this one is done that one's good to go so make sure to use the outside of your dimensional pieces um, when I first started stamping I threw that away I was like there's no more dimensionals left but then I was like wait a minute I can still use these outside pieces and it works all right again I'm gonna embellish this last and now we're gonna work on our last panel here our one and a quarter by four panel of designer series paper and right in the middle of that one our last scalloped edge here now this one I'm gonna stamp the right way so we're gonna stamp the happy birthday first that's in Calypso Coral and I'm doing that opposite from the last one I just did because I want to make sure that my little um, flowering peach, the stem, will fit. So I don't want to overlap too much with my happy birthday because that's actually the main sentiment that I want to focus on for this project. This is going to be a birthday card. So that's the, the main focus of the whole thing. And I'm going to stamp that first and work around that piece. Close up our Calypso Coral. Lots of opening and closing our different ink pads here. We're gonna start with Pear Pizzazz. Now, because it's a bigger stamp, I like to just tap my ink pad on it upside down rather than stamping it into the ink pad just so I can control the amount of ink that's going on there. All right, flip, we're gonna do this one right side up and stamp that. And then this one has the peaches that go along with it. So we're gonna use these three little peach parts here. And a trick with this one. Now this stamp set, or this stamp on this has one peach that points to the right. So that's how I know which way is up. Plus if you see here, let me point this out. The little peaches have these kind of little indents right here at the top. So that's how you know that's up. That's supposed to connect with your stem. But the best part about this is this doesn't just have to be for peaches. You can use this for plums, cherries, blueberries. This is a multi fruit stamp set. So just because it says sweet as a peach doesn't mean you have to stamp this to be a peach. This could be a plum as well. This could be a apple if you want, but I've seen different variations in uh, color for these three re right here, especially with cherries and blueberries and just different fruit there. So don't think of it just as a peach set, kind of think of it outside as a variety of fruit. What are those fantastic storage envelopes for my die cuts? Okay, I'll bring them back in so you can see them. So these are from a company called Stamp and Storage. So it's Stamp N, the letter N, Storage. They are a great company. They're actually the company, if you can kind of see in my background here, my paper storage. They are who I buy my paper storage from, but these are their dye envelopes that they have as well. They're perfect. I just take them from um, what they come in and Stampin' Up. They come in... Um, like a plastic envelope with this really sticky uh, adhesive on it and I don't put them on magnet sheets or anything because they can get expensive with the amount of die sets that I have but I just keep them on this card that Stampin' Up! sends it on. Um, once that adhesive gets a little less sticky I take our Stampin' Seal Plus and just run a line of that down here and it um, re-sticks the adhesive and then I just put my dies back on here. They have fabulous ink storage. Um, I don't work for them. I don't get any kind of kickback from them. I just know that they're a great company and the best part, it's made in America. So all of their um, wood shelving is all made in America in the Midwest. Um, perfect for 
stamping up products and they even have ones for like to hold your markers next to your ink pads and all these different creations that they come up with and it it's a great company um so that's who i get my dye envelopes from there all right so our peach with the point is going to the right and we're gonna line that up with our stems here and there we go so our our stems will fit right into those little notches at the top of our stem there. So just a little trick that I found. Don't look at this one. I stamped it upside down, but this is the right way up is what it's supposed to look like. Who knew that peaches grow down and not up like that, you know? <laughs> I, as soon as I stamped it, I was like, oh man, well, I'm just going to go with it. It still looks good and it works. <laughs> I was like, I'll just show you guys the right way to do it on the live. So, all right, we've got our uh, dimensionals on the back and we're gonna place that on our last panel here. And now we're gonna come in with our sequins. Now these are included in the July class. So you get the, the designer series paper, the peach paper, the sequins and twine, enough to make eight different projects here. For this first panel here, we're just gonna take one of the big sequins, and these are kind of iridescent. They have a really fun, like, iridescent shimmer to them. I hope that you guys can see that coming through. But you get four different colors, so it's great. All right, now to our next panel. We're gonna do two of the small sequins and one of the large blue ones here in the bottom right hand corner. Our next panel, we're gonna use this like iridescent red color for right here in the lower left. And this one is gonna have four of the small red ones in the middle of the flowers sorry, three of the small red ones in the middle. And it looks like my top one fell off there. Yes, it does add some bling and it's, it's not like overpowering too. And they're flat, so you can easily mail them. But that is our pinwheel project here with our four different panels, all embellished, all ready to go. Stands up so you can display this and folds flat to fit right into a medium size envelope. Again, like I mentioned at the beginning, this would probably require some additional postage if you're gonna mail this just because of its bulk. Um, if you decided to do cardstock in that middle tower there, it would add more bulk as well. So definitely opt for designer series paper on the inside if you're planning to mail this out. But this is our project, our pinwheel project for Technique Tuesday. All right, thank you everybody for joining me for another week of Technique Tuesday and this really fun pinwheel project. Don't forget the deadline to register for July's Sweet as a Peach project kit is July 12th, so only six days away to sign up for that class. If you're wanting to register or learn more about the class, the link will be in the description of this video at the end of the video. I hope you all have an amazing week and I will see you next week for Makers Monday. Bye.